Folks, I am super excited to be introducing you to this next creator here on the channel. He is the Texas Trey. Uh, Trey was a lifelong Republican who's now an independent, and he is every bit as fed up with MAGA and Donald Trump as the rest of us. We had a really good conversation about Trump's talks to be dictator and the uh, talks about a bloodbath. I think you're really going to enjoy this conversation. Take a look at it, and then I'll come back and tell you where you can find and follow the Texas Trey. Well, Trey, I want to welcome you here to my channel and uh, really excited to be talking with you. Uh, right now, man, it's like the craziest election that I ever remember in my lifetime. And uh, we have Trump out there on the campaign trail talking about how that if he loses, it could be a bloodbath. And he's talking about being dictator on day one. And we've talked in the past, you know, and you've let me know that you were at one point a lifelong Republican. How does it make you feel now to see Trump out there saying these kind of things? And, and what's your take on it, man? Well, it's just... Yes, I was a lifelong Republican voter, straight ticket Republican voter. I didn't really pay much attention to politics because it was just some, something that we didn't really talk about that much. I mean, I voted in the major elections mainly because I felt it was my patriotic duty to do so, but it didn't impact our lives and permeate every aspect of our daily life like it does now. And, you know, I remember, and you probably recall too, the biggest thing that Republicans and Democrats used to argue about was, you know, how much they were going to spend on the defense budget or, uh, you know, welfare or things like that. And, uh, yeah. you know, today it's just totally different. So I don't recognize the Republican party anymore. You know, I, I'll be straight up. I voted for Trump in 2016. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know much about him other than he was not part of the Washington establishment. Uh, mm -hmm. I really voted for him, not because I was interested in him, but more because it was a vote against Hillary. And the really yeah. thing that, that, that got me there about her was just, I don't know. It was, she had this sort of sense of entitlement, like it was all hers to begin with. And I didn't really see much out of her that inspired me. I really thought that election was hers to lose. I really thought she was going to win it. I was shocked the next morning when I woke up Yeah. and, uh, yeah, Brandon, I mean, it was just, yeah. it, it's just so far from what I remember it. Um, but it's off the rails in my opinion. Yeah. It, and it's really interesting to hear you say that. Cause you know, I talked to a whole lot of people and I talked to people who still, you know, are still right there supporting Trump and they still consider themselves Republicans and they call it Republican. Now I've always been on the left. I've, I've voted Democrat straight down the line my entire life, but I just, I don't recognize the Republican party either. It's like, I don't recognize the, the, the arguments we used to be having, like, it's like they're long gone now. And it's like, we're in a completely different place. And suddenly, you know, like here you and I are, we're on the same side of the fence now. <laughs> it's, more, I mean, it's more about it's more about democracy than anything. I'm not really, you know, I've, I've always voted Democrat straight down the line, but I've always been a believer in democracy. And I've always said to people, you know, I don't care if you're a Republican, independent, whatever you are, you know, democracy is what we should all be in favor of. And when you have Trump out there saying, I'm going to be a dictator on day one, you know, and I'll terminate the Constitution if I need to, that's not something that Republicans was saying years ago. And that's something that would have uh, really, I can't imagine what would have happened had a Democrat said that along the campaign trail, what a Republican would have said 10 years ago. Oh, you're absolutely right. I mean, I remember a time when anything like what is tossed around today, if was said by either party would have immediately disqualified from them from all. And they, you know, people would yeah. have pulled their support from them immediately. And, you know, Trump and his rhetoric and his talk about blood. And I know people come on and say, well, he was talking about the auto industry. It's, well, you know, cars don't bleed. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it's just, I, he knew, he knew what he was saying and he knew the message that he was sending in all of that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's so far, you know, as far as Republican and Democrat and independent, I think you, you make a good point. And it is about democracy. Uh, and to me, it's about just being a decent human being. Right. I mean, exactly. treating people with fundamental respect. I'm a big believer in freedom and liberty. Yeah. For everybody. Yeah. Regardless of how you choose to live your life, regardless of how you identify. Right. It, yeah. that, I support that because that is your right in a free society to do that. Absolutely. And I'm looking at a party now in the Republican Party that. You know, I grew up in the Cold War and the Reagan era, you know, and all that. And it, it was, you know, I, I can't believe they're so tied in with the Russians of all people. <laughs> like I know. That, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I grew up in the 80s, man. And, yeah, I grew up in the 80s here in, uh, here in Reagan say, you know, tear down that wall. <laughs> and now here we are. It's, it's, so, uh, it's so crazy that we come to this point. But, you know, a lot of people will accuse people like me and you of spreading hyperbole. They'll say we're just trying to get people worked up and get people, you know, living in fear. But... Do you think we're overreacting or do you think we should be taking this dead seriously? 
no, I don't think we're overreacting at all. You know, uh, you know, on TikTok, a lot of what I do is is humorous, and and I, I weave hyperbole into my statements and and mm-hmm. into the videos that I post and such. But no, in fact, uh, I'm going to do some content on this in the coming days. No, we what we've done here, Brandon, is we have cornered a wounded, dying animal in terms of conservatism or MAGA or whatever label you want to put on it now. And this is a very dangerous situation because nothing is more dangerous. Nothing is more vicious. Nothing is more unpredictable than a wounded, dying animal. And I hear people all the time say things like, oh, that's just, you know, that's conspiracy theory stuff. You know, this Trump's never going to be president. I mean, really? You want to bet? the future of this country and the freedom that we have and enjoy on that. Right. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't put anything past him at this point. And that's not being crazy. I think that's being pragmatic at, at this point. Uh, you know? Yeah. I really do. Absolutely. I, th- I think we should definitely be listening to him. You know, it's, it's one of those things that we, uh, we talked about, you know, you can't, you never thought that it would ever come to this point where people are saying that. And I saw him make a comment where he was saying how that, you know, he was, he says those things just to get people talking and get people having the conversations and I'm like, yeah, but the, what what really stands out to me is the people that goes along with it. And when you confront them about it, they're like, that's okay. I'm good with it. Whatever he does, I'm cool. And I'm not really going to count the guy out until the, until the very end because I counted him out in 2016. I didn't think he was going had a shot. I remember there was there was one point though where I did start to get kind of a sick feeling in my gut, and that was when uh, you know I could see all the Bernie Bros getting really upset about it. I was like, you know, I remember thinking. I was like, you know, there's going to be a lot of people maybe stay home or vote third party. I, I, I did worry about that, but I still thought in the end Hillary would pull it off, and then she didn't. And, I mean, now look where we're at with the Supreme Court being stacked as far to the right that it is. And to look down the, to look into the future and think about a second Trump, Donald Trump term, I just feel like it would be an, a retribution presidency. It would just be all about payback for him. Oh, that's absolutely He He is a narcissistic, uh, maniacal, you know, self totally self-absorbed person who is concerned only with getting revenge for the wrongs that he has perceived have been done to him personally. And this has been part of his, uh, at least from things I've read, you know, his personality makeup for, for a long time. And Hillary was right about everything she ultimately said, which is the That's irony for me in it, you know, because I didn't find anything particularly compelling back then. And now I look back on it. I'm like, Oh my gosh, she, she hit every nail on the head. But I, I want to say this, Brandon, um, you know, we focus a lot on Trump and his, you know, apparent mental breakdown that he's going through is disintegrating as he going along and the crazy stuff that he says and the bloodbath stuff. But really, I think we should be really worried about the the machinery and the system behind him because he's Absolutely. just one person. And there's a lot of people in our government who support him, but I don't believe they support him because they necessarily give a crap about Donald Trump. They yeah. support obtaining the power and the control. Exactly. And That's a great point. All of these people that are out here and supporting it, they're not going to go away overnight when if Trump, you know, is not elected president. Yeah. And neither are those people in the government. And my wife works a lot on the front lines in, in public education towards standing up against the takeover, if you will, of our public school system by this this conservative ideal, you know, project uh 2025, right? Yeah. And and, yeah. and all these things that are coming on. I mean, it's a it's scary with all yeah. this behind him, you know? Yeah. And project 2025 is something I've just started reading. I'm just in the first couple of pages of it. I went online and I downloaded, I even went to the trouble of printing it out because I feel like it's important, you know, and I sat down and started reading it. And just from like the, the intro and the first couple of pages, I'm like, more people need to dive in and read this because like you said that, you know, Trump is, he's there. They can get behind him right now and he can be, you know, the vehicle that they, you know, they can let him drive and steer at the moment. But once he's gone, they're still going to be trying to, to implement this stuff. And, you know, that's that's something that I think more and more people needs to be taken a look at because a lot of times they're go- they're going to accuse us of spreading conspiracy theories or hyperbole, but it's right there. They're telling us exactly who they are. They're telling us what they want to do, and um, I think we need to listen. I think you're right, and and it's not the the bumbling sort of gibberish that he speaks at times that concerns me. It's not the fun people make fun of him and point you know poke fun of him for his. It's it's the quiet people behind him that you don't see and that you don't hear exactly. that are really help sort of helping all this to come about. Uh, and that's what concerned me. Don't think for a second that they didn't learn a lot of lessons from January 6th. And, and yeah. you know, I just, that's a personal opinion of mine, you know, yeah. what's waiting in the wings for us. Yeah. And you know, now you were telling me, you know, that you, 
you know, you're an independent voter. And uh, one thing that I think about is when we, as we go into the election, Donald Trump needs to appeal to independence. He needs, he can't win a general election. I don't think without him. So as an independent, is he doing anything? Do you see anything coming from Trump that would be appealing to an independent voter that would sway you to his side? Oh no, not, not from Donald Trump. No, I, I really, I am an independent voter. I'm neither a Republican nor a Democrat. Uh, I, yeah. I just look at issues. There are problems and solutions. And a favorite yeah. creator of uh, ours, Mr. Global said on TikTok that yeah. problems aren't political. They're problems and solutions aren't political. Exactly. They're solutions, but everybody's focused on the politics. They interject the politics into it. So the problems don't get solved. Right. And That's so I'm very point. much, you know, I, um, I'm a big believer in the second amendment. I'm also a big, yeah. you know, supporter of, of, um, the people right to love and marry whoever they want to love in this country shouldn't be, yeah. you know, I'm a big supporter of women's bodily autonomy, all these things. So it really depends on the, uh, you know, no, no, there's nothing that appeals to me about yeah. him because it really is coming down. This is a vote about, this is a choice between, in my opinion, we've got two very old white guys, right. Mm -hmm. Running for office. Yeah. And if we pick one, we at least have the chance for the democratic principles and processes that underpin our republic to 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 survive, and we can live to fight another day. Right? Exactly, that's a great. Yeah. The other one, I, I'm really if he does the things that he has said he is going to do, and that are outlined in Project 2025 and other places, then we lose that ability, right? And and who knows what this society looks like at that point? So those are the really only two issues on the ballot. At yeah, this that's that's me, man. We're we're right there together, and I I so appreciate you for coming on the channel, and I would love to have you back more often because we we share a whole lot in common, and a lot of good ideas are exchanged. So it's always great talking to you, man, and would love to have you back anytime. Absolutely, hey, thank you for the opportunity. Always good to see you and talk with you, Brandon. All right, thank you, man. You bet. It's always a great time sitting down and talking with my good buddy Texas Trey. You guys can find him here on YouTube at the Texas Trey. Be sure to go over and subscribe to his channel. He's also on the TikTok app as Texas.Trey, so go over there and give him a follow. Trey is starting over with uh, new accounts here on social media, so we want to get his following back up there. And uh, it's always a good time with him. We thank him for coming on the channel, and I'm sure you guys will be seeing him again soon.